Hi guys, Olive here, here today to bring you my summer book haul. As I said at the beginning of my spring book haul, I have acquired a lot of books over the past six months or so. I went to some used bookstores. I have still been buying books online, mainly used books just because that's what I prefer. But I ended up with a few too many to include all in one video. So what I decided to do was to separate all the books that I acquired into piles for each of the four different seasons. And I I would show them to you when that season rolled around. Well, now that we are approaching summer, it's time to show you all of the summer feeling type of books. So in this book haul, I have books that are either set or related to warmer climates. I have some books that are beachy. I have some books for Jane Austen July. We have a little bit of everything in here. So let me show you all the books. The first book I would like to show you is one that I was very excited to find a copy of in a used bookstore. It's Doc by Mary Doria Russell. I really love Mary Doria Russell, at least I've loved all the books I've read of hers so far. I thought The Sparrow was a work of genius. And then her latest book, The Women of the Copper Country, I reviewed that book for Open Letters Review. And I was very pleasantly surprised that they blurbed that review on the paperback. It was very unexpected. And they didn't even take the quote I would have expected them to take. But anyway, if I'm going to have a first blurb on any book, I am so glad it was on a Mary Doria Russell book. I think she is such a talent. And I've been really wanting to go back and revisit a lot of her backlist because I have more recently become a fan of hers. And this is one that I've been really meaning to read. This is all about Doc Holliday, Wyatt Earp, The American Frontier, and all of that. I would normally say say that that kind of a book isn't my thing, but this is Mary Doria Russell and I will read anything she writes. The second book I would like to show you is a classic work of nature writing. It's called Desert Solitaire by Edward Abbey. This author was born here in Western Pennsylvania, but he didn't stay around here. He actually worked as a park ranger in Utah for a few years. And in this book, he describes that experience, but also his more general frustrations with how people and companies were exploiting the land. And this book was written in 1968, so I can't imagine things have gotten much better since he wrote this book. So I definitely want to read this one. I think it's important to read this one, but I also think it's probably going to break my heart a little bit. This next book I picked up for two different reasons. The first reason being that I thought it looked interesting, but the second reason is that I have a very strong suspicion that I have something in common with this author. That book is All Strangers Are Kin, Adventures in the Arab World by Zora O'Neill. From what I can gather, it seems like this author feels a similar connection to the Arabic speaking worlds that I feel to the Russian speaking worlds. This indescribable gravitational pull toward a specific language and culture. This author studied Arabic for years in order to become proficient. In this book, she describes her language learning journey, but also her journey around the physical world. She travels to a number of different Arabic speaking countries in order to experience the culture and to continue learning the language. This next book I have to show you is one that I found at the exact same used bookstore that I found Doc. It's called The Lizard King, The True Crimes and Passions of the World's Greatest Reptile Smugglers by Brian Christie. This book seems to be the catch me if you can of the reptile worlds, because in it, a federal agent attempts to capture a very clever reptile smuggler. I have been living for this whole natural history, true crime crossover type of subgenre. There are way more books within that subgenre than you might think, even though it's so specific. Wildlife crime is a really big thing. I would classify the feather thief within that type of subgenre. I feel like I've read most books within it, so I'm very excited to read this. This next book I have to show you, I've been wanting for such a long time. I'm so happy I have my own copy of it now. It's called called Dreaming in Turtle, A Journey Through the Passion, Profit, and Peril of Our Most Coveted Prehistoric Creatures by Peter Lawfer. This is the story of turtles and tortoises from ancient times all the way up until today. This next book was actually a recommendation from one of you in the comment section of a video that I did last year. I do take your recommendations. Some of you have been with me for a number of years, and I trust you to know my taste. And this book definitely sounded right up my alley. So when I found a used copy. 
I snagged it. That book is The Secret Life of Lobsters, How Fishermen and Scientists Are Unraveling the Mysteries of Our Favorite Crustacean by Trevor Corson. This book is both a portrait of a lobstering community in Maine, but also a look into what we know and continue to learn about these crustaceans. And since hurricane season is unfortunately upon us, I also picked up a copy of A Furious Sky, A 500-Year History of America's Hurricanes by Eric J. Dolan. Hurricane season in North America runs from June through November every single year. And since it makes up such a chunk of every single year, you can imagine that America has a very storied history with them. And in this book, the author aims to tell that history. Now, when it comes to this next book, I, for whatever reason, have been wanting to read more about the history of the River Thames. I want to learn more about rivers in general, but I figure I can start with the Thames. And so I bought myself a copy of The Way to the Sea, The Forgotten History of the Thames Estuary by Carolyn Crampton. This author was raised on the banks of the Thames Estuary, and this entire book seems to be a meditation on the meaning of the river. It sounds gorgeous. This next book I spoke about in my last fiction, nonfiction matchups video that I did during Nonfiction November last year, but now I finally have my own copy of this book. It's called The Great Swim by Gavin Mortimer. This is a sports history book. It's all about how in the summer of 1926, four different American swimmers all attempted to be the first woman to swim across the English Channel. Now, in my last haul, I mentioned that I had bought a bunch of different backlist titles from Greystone Books. Greystone Books is an indie publisher. They're one of my all-time favorite publishers. I love pretty much everything they put out. So on a whim a few weeks ago, I decided to look through their back catalogs and see if there was anything in there that I might be interested in. And no surprise, there were tons of books that they've published in previous years that I wanted to get my hands on. So I bought a whole bunch of used copies. This next book is another one of those Greystone books that I picked up. I just put it in the summer pile because it is definitely more summery. It's called A Mermaid's Tale, A Personal Search for Love and Lore by Amanda Adams. This book looks at the mythology of mermaids through history and across cultures, but in the book, the author also discusses her own lifelong obsession with mermaids. And speaking of Greystone books, I also have one of their newer releases to show you. I think this one came out toward the end of last year, and embarrassingly enough, I forgot that they sent this one to me. I misplaced it here in my reading room. I just recently found it and I want to get to it because they were kind enough to send me a finished copy, but also this book is perfect for summer. So it's the right time for me to finally pick this up. It's called Seaweed, an Enchanting Miscellany by Meeks Wamborn. This is a gorgeous naked hardcover and it's all about the history, culture, and science behind the very ubiquitous yet somehow still mysterious sea plant. Next up is a book about the largest city of an island nation, I got myself a copy of Havana, a subtropical delirium by Mark Kurlansky. This is a history of the city of Havana written by the famous micro history writer Mark Kurlansky, but this book also includes other perspectives from Cuban writers and from other foreign writers like Ernest Hemingway. I can't even explain to you how much I would love to visit the city of Havana, but Americans still are not allowed to go there. Because didn't you know, apparently it's still the 60s and the Soviets are still a threat. So I guess I'll have to read this book instead. I also picked up another book about an island. It's called Blue, a St. Bart's memoir by David Coggins. This is a memoir in which the author discusses his family's annual trips to the island of St. Bart's, which is in the French West Indies. And this book is jam packed with the author's watercolors and ink drawings. It looks just absolutely absolutely gorgeous. And I am sure it will be very, very relaxing to read. But if that book was about the color blue, then this next book is just about color in general. It's called A Natural History of Color, The Science Behind What We See and How We See It by Rob DeSalle and Hans Bakor. This is a book all about how we see, but also how we understand color. And if you have spent any amount of time here on this channel, you will likely know just how much I love and celebrate color. 
here on my channel and out in my everyday life as well. I love color. I love dressing colorfully. But I'm also fascinated by how our brains interpret color. So I cannot wait to read this. Making a natural jump from color to art, I also picked up a copy of Mr. Lear, A Life of Art and Nonsense by Jenny Uglow. This is a biography of the famous English artist, musician, author, and poet. It seems as though he had a very colorful life. So I will be fascinated fascinated to read this. But now on to a few books about a different English author. Just in case you didn't know, when July rolls around, it will be Jane Austen July, which is an event hosted every year by the wonderful Katie from Books and Things. Every single July, she encourages us to read the novels of Jane Austen or to read about Jane Austen. It's just a month celebrating the wonderful Jane Austen. I love Jane Austen's novels, and I also like to learn more about her. And so I recently picked up three different nonfiction books about Jane Austen that I thought I would show to you in case you're looking for some options of what you yourself could read for Jane Austen July. The first of the three that I would like to show you is called Jane's Fame, How Jane Austen Conquered the World by Claire Harmon. This is a kind of biography, but it's not just about Jane Austen. It's also about her fame over the years. Next is What Jane Austen Ate and Charles Dickens Knew by Daniel Poole. This book is exactly what it sounds like. It's all about what daily life would have been like in the 19th century. I have heard nothing but positive things about this book. Everyone who I have seen read this book has gone on to love it. So I was so excited to see this one in a used bookstore. And then the third of the three Jane Austen nonfiction books that I picked up is called Austen Years, a memoir in five novels by Rachel Cohen. In this book, the author talks about how she used Jane Austen's novels to help her get through a really difficult time in her life between the birth of her first child and the death of her father. I first heard about this book last year. I have heard that it is wonderful and I am so excited I finally own it. There are three more books to show you in this haul. And this next one was pretty big last year, but I did not get to it when everyone was talking about it. So I ordered myself a used copy of it so I can just be late to the party. It is The Unraveling of Cassidy Holmes by Alyssa R. Sloan. This book is all about a girl group, like a musical girl group who broke up in the early 2000s. And then the most famous member of their group took her own life. The remaining members of this group throughout this book think back on their history as a group and consider whether or not they could have done anything differently to help save her life. That sounds interesting just by itself. But also, I am someone who came of age in the iconic early to mid 2000s. So I'm especially interested to read this. And speaking of music, this next book sounded so incredibly fascinating, there was no way I could pass it up. It's called Uproot, Travels in 21st Century Music and Digital Culture by Jace Clayton. This book was written by a DJ who has played music all over the world. This definitely seems like an indescribable kind of book. I cannot get a firm read on what to expect from this book, but that honestly makes me all the more intrigued to pick it up and soon. All I can tell is that this book is about global music in the 21st century, which reminds me of How Music Got Free, one of my all-time favorite nonfiction books, which means I need to pick this up and soon, and my husband wants to read this one too. And the final book in this haul is another one that I will be passing along to my husband as soon as I'm done with it. It's called Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, The Triumphant, Turbulent Stories Behind How Video Games Are Made by Jason Schreier. This book is all about the pure and utter chaos that goes into the making of a video game, big or small. It is a very wild industry. I know a little bit about it. I've read other books about the video game industry. My husband's a big gamer who keeps more up to date about the happenings of the industry. And I am still positive that there will be things in this book that will shock me. As soon as I started reading Jason Schreier's newest book called Press Reset, I knew I had to go back and read his older book because his writing is just fantastic. So I'm very happy I own this now. So those are all of my recent book acquisitions positions that struck me as being summary for one reason or another. If you have read 
read any of these books. If you've heard of them or if you're interested in reading any of these now that you've seen them in this video, please do let me know in the comment section below. If you would like to keep up with what I'm reading or writing about right now, you can find me on various places around the internet, including Goodreads and other social media platforms. The links to everywhere you can find me will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Oh,